That song kind of sticks in your mind, doesn't it? <laughs> I know, I know. Good morning, church. And welcome to Bethel. And it looks like we have decaf again. <laughs> yes, we do. Sorry it's a little late. It's a little late to make it for you for today. Yeah, I'm having tea. So I'm oh, you're having tea? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Kim made me a tea. <laughs> oh, that was nice. Kim made each of us a coffee, too. That was cool. It's a beautiful day today, and today I believe we're into fall now, aren't we? Is today the first day of fall? I'm never sure if it's the 21st or 22nd because they, they change it all the time. So, oh, I know. It's, I think they do it by the hour. Government must do it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, we're going to start off singing This Is the Day. this is going to be the day that my fingers forget how they're supposed to hit the keys. <laughs> I don't know what it is with them, but they do work eventually. Okay, is this thing on now? Doesn't sound like it. Didn't sound like it? Oh, there we go. There we are, we're on now? Okay. Well, I made the mistake of leaving the key on, leaving it turned on um, mm -hmm. <laughs> last Sunday. Oh. <laughs> well, surprise, surprise. <laughs> The rechargeable batteries, decharged or discharged or whatever the case may be. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together today. And Lord, we thank you for your patience and for your love. Without you, we know that uh, we wouldn't be here. And Lord, we welcome you in this place. You tell us where two or three are gathered in your name that you're here in the midst. We want you to be here, Lord. We want your presence to be here at all times. Direct our path, Lord. Direct our words and our thoughts. And let us bless you today, Lord, with our songs of praise and worship. And we ask that your words are said in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, we have announcements here. Worship practice. Um, you're in the office at Elsa Quag tomorrow, so that yeah, means it's Thursday. Stuff like that, but yeah. yeah, so Thursday. Thursday good? Funeral on Thursday? Oh. Okay. At night? You won't be up to it afterwards. It's in Fergus. I don't know when I'm going to be home. Oh, Fergus, right. Yeah. Thursday, okay? Okay. Thursday? Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> Thursday's okay with him, too. <laughs> okay, we'll do it Thursday. Okay. Um, they're going to be familiar songs. Okay. So it shouldn't be. Um, shouldn't be too difficult. Okay. And you come in early on Sunday and we'll get the practice done anyway. Fellowship. Okay. Um, next week is the plot blessing. So I thought that was this week. We, we passed it, or that was last week. That was last week. Oh. Yeah. Last week was plot blessing. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> so, barbecue. Next week, barbecue. And I was there. I was there. Right? Yes, you were. Yes, you were. <laughs> It's been a good week for you, wasn't I just it? Have a blessing in my brain. Yes, it has. It's been a good week. Okay. Good. Now I believe you guys are having a wee meeting after the service today. Yes. yes. Okay. Just a wee one. Just a wee. Yes, yeah. a wee. So, wee one. <laughs> okay. Um, September thirtieth, there's um, a meeting over at Knox Church for the Pine Hill Cemetery. Um, you're all aware that uh, it's being well. It's. I don't know if it's being closed or what the case may be. Uh, they're not selling new plots there, but they're, if you own a plot, you can still 
um, use it, be buried there. Um, it's not under the United Church any longer. It's, I was of the understanding it was going to be under the county, but then now it seems it's going to be under Lambton Shores. So at the meeting on the 30th, everything will be cleared up. Well, there's going to be a plan that they hope is made that can keep it going. It, it's all up in the arms. It costs a lot of money to keep the uh, cemeteries going, and churches are usually the ones that uh, take care of it. Um, and they just can't afford it anymore. So a lot of them are being turned over to the county to take care of. Um, and what it's going to mean, too, is, do you remember years ago um, at the cemeteries, you went in and you maintained your family's spots, right? Okay, I think that's what it's going to go back to. You have to maintain the spots yourself, but um, you need to have a place to do that, too. So September 30th, 6.30, over at Knox Church. Write your questions down. Christine is uh, taking the information from the meeting and uh, taking it to council. And she has to have everything into them on the 11th of October. Okay, so because they want to know everything that's going to be going on at the meeting, no surprises. All right, so uh, write your questions down. Take them in, ask them, and then she'll be able to go bring it forward. All right? All right, go to the next one. Samaritan's Purse. We have the shoe boxes back there. Um, I didn't do up a video uh, this week for it, or I didn't download one. Collection week is November the 18th to the 24th. It is a well worthwhile uh, charity that uh, we support. And it's, you don't buy a whole bunch of stuff, but you buy stuff that kids around the world can use. And the video we watched last week, it was a young lady who had gotten her first Christmas gift was a shoe box and she was 12 years old and now she's working in children's ministry. She, it was so touched her heart. So it's, uh, it's important. They're not big, they're just standard shoe box size, but they're back there. I folded one together so you know what they look like. All right, Katie. Oh. Her funeral is next week. Um, and it'll be at the Leisure Center in Park Hill. Do you know, um, if I'm not looking at the picture, I can talk, talk about it, but then <laughs> it becomes real when you uh, look at it. But uh, she, she's with the Lord now, so I mean, she's no longer suffering. She's no longer sick with diabetes, that uh, she's praising God. And actually, she's further ahead than we are because she's not uh, in the battle of life anymore. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's a celebration of life. The cremation has already taken place and everyone is welcome to attend. Okay, I think that's the last one on there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, and then we're going to sing. Lord, make me an instrument.
Was there a picture before that scripture? No. Oh, it wasn't there. Well, isn't that a corker? Okay. The, uh, the title on this one is, uh, We've Been Rescued from Sin. Praise God. Colossians 1, 11 to 14. What does that say there? 11 to 14. There we go. May you be filled with joy. Do you know that's something we need to be all the time? The joy of the Lord is what we need all the time. And then we can face anything that comes our way. Always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear Son. 
who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Praise God. Jesus did it all. He did it all for us. And it's by grace and through faith that we find our rescue from sin. Romans 3, 25 to 31. For God presented Jesus as a sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just, and he declares sinners to be right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. Can we boast then that we have done anything to be accepted by God? No, because our, acquit our acquittal is not based on obeying the law. It is based on faith. So we are made right with God through faith and not by obeying the law. After all, is God the God of the Jews only? Isn't he also the God of the Gentiles? Of course he is. There is only one God, and he makes people right within himself, only by faith, whether you're Jew or Gentile. Well then, if we emphasize faith, does this mean that we can forget about the law? Of course not. In fact, only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. I know there's a lot of scripture in that, wasn't there? But at the same time, it's something that... Uh, we need to recognize. Sorry, I used this yesterday and I've got them a little bit mixed up. Because I write on it too afterwards when people are saying things. <laughs> anyway, we're helpless in our battle against sin. We can't do it on our own. We can't win against the evils of this world. We can't even win against what's considered to be good in this world because we need the strength of God in each and every one of us. And it's because of the sin that we have the difficulties that we do. And that sin has been around since the, uh, what is called the fall of man. And that's way back in the time of the garden. So it's back in the beginning. And it's just spread from that time forward. You have someone coming to join you. As he wipes his eyes, he's just coming through. <laughs> In case you hadn't noticed, we're a little casual here. <laughs> the important thing is that you come and you hear the word of God. So we need God. We need God, regardless of um, who we are, regardless of our status, regardless of our color. Because, you know, underneath, we all bleed red. What, did I say the wrong thing and you're going to leave again? <laughs> going to go have your morning coffee? No, I'm going to drive back to work. Oh, somebody's got to go to work. Okay. Work is important, too. God hates sin. But we know that everyone has sinned. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means everybody, absolutely everybody, because that sin had filtered down through and we're born into sin. John 3, 16. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. From that first sin, God had a plan to restore his relationship with his people, all people. Christ did this for us. And he did what we couldn't do ourselves. He rescued us from sin and death. Romans 5, 8, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand, and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. 
And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Paul explains the truths of the gospel through uh, the book of Romans, and he explains how Jesus saves us of his, from uh, our sins. And we see that Jesus came at just the right time. That's what it says in verse 6. <laughs> Christ came at just the right time. And the world was in chaos at that time, and it seems to be the same way now. The Romans controlled the Jews, and the Jews were waiting for a conquering Messiah. They weren't waiting for a baby. They weren't waiting for someone to walk around and say, you've got to love your enemies. Love the ones that hate you. That wasn't the way they lived. I mean, if somebody gave you a hard time, well, you just wipe them out. You don't uh, turn around and love them. But that's what the message was from Jesus. And that's what the message still is today. We love each other. He says, you must love one another as I've loved you. So love is the message. It's not retaliation. <clears throat> Verse 8. Jesus came at just the right time. And we were still sinners at that time. And you know God can't look at sin. But with the covering of Jesus' blood, he can look at us. Because what he sees then is the blood of Jesus. And that's purity. And that's truth. People were chasing after their wants to give themselves temporary satisfaction in that time. Well, isn't the same thing happening now? They weren't thinking of salvation from sin. Rather, they wanted to be satisfied right here and now. But God loved them and he loves us. And that's why he saved them and saved us. He loves us enough to bring us salvation. <clears throat> Does anybody here ever go through difficult times? Tough times? Yeah, yeah, I think we all do. I think we all do. And we see in the, uh, the one scripture there that uh, difficult times is what strengthens us. We're all going to go through them. It's not a time to complain. It's not a time to blame other people for it or to say, why me? Why does it always have to be me? Well, why not me? Why not me? Verses 3 and 4. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. So the difficult times strengthens us, and it'll strengthen our faith as well. We know that we'll have trouble, because God told us that. Jesus told us that. We can choose to have a pity party, or we can ask God, what can I learn from this? How can I help others with what I'm going through? Because it's a lesson. It's a lesson. And we need to let our, our faith be strengthened, and we need to praise God through the difficult times. And then they're not going to be as difficult. Well, they'll still be hard, but not as daunting. They're not going to control our lives if we turn our focus on to God. Now John, or James has something to say about this too. And James was the uh, half-brother of Jesus. He, had, uh, and he didn't have anything to do with him when he was in his ministry on earth. And Jude was another brother. The brothers, remember the, the brothers and the mother, they went to uh, the meeting and they wanted Jesus brought out because he was losing his mind. And then Jesus says, well, who are my mother? Who is my brother? Who are my brothers? And he says, you are. Anyone who is following the word of God. Okay, now James, after the resurrection. James 1, verses 2 to 4. says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. 
Praise God. When we go through trials, it's our opportunity to be completely reliant on God. Because the weaker we are, the stronger he is in us. We need to give up the, uh, the wants and look after the needs. Because that's what God wants to give us, what we need. And we need to be thankful for all that he gives. We have peace with God because of what Jesus did for us, each one of us. We see in Romans uh, verse, chapter 5, verse 1, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. <clears throat> Jesus stood in our place. He took our sins upon him, and he took them to the cross. Now we're going to go to John chapter 20, verse 19. When Jesus came into the, uh, the room that the believers were all gathered in, that room was locked. And he appeared in the center of them. And the first thing he said to them, Peace be with you. And he didn't just say it once. He said it again. Verse 21. Again he said, Peace be with you. We know that God's love isn't earned. It's given because Jesus sacrificed his life as payment for our sins. And it's through faith that we are saved. It is by faith that we have a right relationship with God. God's grace and mercy has to be accepted through faith. Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. God saved you by his grace when you believed, and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for good things you have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. It was planned. It's not by chance. And the blood was shed. Jesus' blood. Once you've decided to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it's imperative that you stand firm in that decision. You don't waffle on it. You don't sit on the fence. You are saved. And you follow Jesus. You follow the Lord God. Galatians 5, verse 1. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Titus 3, chapter 7. Because of his grace, he declared us righteous and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. The opportunity for eternal life is the result of being justified by faith. And you know why? Because without faith, there is no justification. Now the question is, do you know what justification is? That's, you know, you, you hear all of this and you go through it and you think, okay, I know faith, that, yep, that's cool. Justified, justification, what is it? Well, you know, I, I, I looked it up to make sure that I had it exactly right. Justification is one. The act by which God moves a willing person from the state of sin or injustice to the state of grace, which is justice. And number two, the change in a person's condition moving from a state of sin to a state of righteousness. Now isn't that the place to be? Justification. Justification. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do... I didn't quite read that fast. <laughs> okay. We... We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. And we're going to be there too. We need to stand firm. And there's a song that, um, Stand Strong, I think it is the one that, <laughs> when we had kids, that's it. That's the one. Um, when we had kids club, the, one of the songs that we sang was uh, Stand Strong. 
and at stand strong when life changes, stand strong through the ups and downs. It's easier to remember, remember the song when you get the actions there. You're going to teach the actions when we do sing that, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. But we need to stand strong in the Lord. Keep our faith, faith strong because uh, God doesn't change. He's always with us. And through the difficult times, through bad news, um, through difficult health, that uh, God is always with us. And if you have the joy of the Lord in your heart, you can walk through anything. Absolutely anything, because he's there. And if you can't do the walking, he's going to carry you. We're going to sing a few more songs, starting with Jesus. There's the picture I was looking for. Look at that. <laughs> it's just backwards. Okay. Jesus bids us shine. Hopefully it comes up to the song now. Oh, the reader. We're good. <clears throat>
here for Lois, that's the wife of a fellow over at uh, the manor, Bevan. Um, she's been moved into hospice, so he's just asking for peace for her as she gets ready to go home. Is there any other prayer requests? I ask that you uh, continue to pray for Ron. We've had an interesting uh, week <laughs> this week. Um, to say the least. Um, I don't even remember what day it was. Seemed everything rolled into one. Was it Monday? Sunday? Monday? Tuesday? Oh, beginning part of the week. Anyway, it's been a tough week for him. Um, with Parkinson's and with Parkinson's dementia, it um, it gives you a, a a new journey every day. Every day is different. And some days it looks like there's absolutely nothing wrong, and other days it's like everything implodes. Um, well, he had gone to bed, I guess about 10, 10.30, something like that, about standard time. And um, for some reason or other, he started thinking that, oh, I need to say something, I gotta talk to Linda. So out to the living room he comes, without the walker, and uh, I heard him coming down the hall, and like he, fortunately in a house, the hall, halls aren't that wide, <laughs> so you can bounce from one side to the other, and you're not really, you don't have enough room to fall over. Um, but he got out to the living room, and he sat down in the chair close to uh, the one I was sitting in, and he's talking, and I couldn't understand what he was saying. The noise was coming out, but the 
I would say, what are you saying? What do you, well, slow down, talk. And it didn't quite register, so I, I said, you know, you need to go back to bed. And I looked around, and I said, where is your uh, walker? And again, he said something, and um, then he decides to get up, and he's going to go to bed. Well, it was a wingback chair. You know those chairs? They've got a high back on them, right? And they've got those little arms on them. And so he got up, and he went over sideways. The chair went flipping backwards, fortunately, because it would have hit him otherwise. And um, he, he's a little difficult to get up when he's down on the ground. And so, so I was trying to get him up. This was about 11.30 at night. And I, I just couldn't get him up. So I went down to the bedroom and I got the pillow and a blanket, brought it out, got his head up on the pillow, covered him up, and went back and sat in the chair for a bit. And then I went and I got my pillow and I laid on, laid on the floor with him too because I still didn't have the strength to get him up. So we laid there. He, he fell asleep almost instantly um, when he had landed on the floor. And then uh, about 4 o'clock he started to stir again. No, but it was about an hour later he was stirring and I thought, it's not comfortable on the floor. I had every joint hurting on me so I couldn't imagine him. So Hank and Samantha had brought a hospital bed over Sunday after uh, church and we of course we haven't got it put together yet that thing's heavy mm -hmm. um, mattresses aren't heavy though so I moved the one mattress out into the living room and <laughs> I'm trying to roll him onto the mattress and he was sort of awake but not awake and I said you gotta try to help me try to push a little bit and so I got him over onto the mattress got his head positioned on the pillow again and um, then I got back, sat in the chair again, and working on songs, so transposing them so I could play them. And he went back to sleep until four o'clock. And then he's stirring again, and he's trying to get up. Well, you know, when a mattress is only that thick and you're used to the bed being so high that your legs will go over top of it, well, he couldn't figure out why his legs couldn't go over top so that he could try to get up. And I'm there trying to get him up. I got a stool for him to uh, pull up with, and that didn't work. I got the walker out there, which is even higher, so I pushed that back. And uh, then I got the two-step ladder, because it <laughs> had the different levels. That didn't work. Well, I guess I was making enough noise. Bobby got up, and she came out, and she was trying to help, and oh my goodness, that didn't work. She got a chair, tried to get him up with that. And he got a little further up with that, so I slid in the ladder thing because it was just a little bit lower, so that brought him a little bit higher, then had her pull the chair out and then push the walker in and got him up. But his legs wouldn't work. They just would not work. So I said, you had to slowly turn around and uh, sit in it. And so then I got him pushed back uh, into bed and got him into bed. And then next morning I <laughs> sent a text to Sam and I said, do you have any folding wheelchairs in there? Because if he comes out again, which I'm sure he will, then he can sit in the wheelchair. I'll set, have that set up. And then I can just wheel him down. We're not going to go through that. And uh, you was looked and had one without a back on it. Isn't that what you said? Yeah. Didn't have a back on it. <clears throat> so then Mark uh, checked with the lions. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had one, praise God. And so she came and she dropped it off here. And we picked it up yesterday after doing service over at the manor. And uh, it fits. It fits mm -hmm. well. It took a minute to realize the arms aren't supposed to be up that high. So, <laughs> so <laughs> figured out how to drop those. So it's, uh, it's quite comfortable. I just have to get a cushion for the seat for him. But he can sit in it as it is. So <clears throat> the... Um, the disease is progressing. So <laughs> we did one day at a time. And uh, we just need prayer. Right. So remember him in prayer. And remember Molly's family. She's a young lady in uh, Arcona. Well, she, was she living in Fer Fergus? Fergus? Yeah, she was from Arcona. No? No. The which? Mississauga Way. Mississauga Way? Yeah, Mississauga. 
Well, how did you know her? I thought you said you were in. Oh, okay. I knew you had lived in Arcona. That's why I thought. <laughs> You lived everywhere. <laughs> I've been everywhere, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And now uh, Molly had two young children, age six and seven, and she used to come to uh, cancer. So uh, we need to remember that family in prayer um, because it's, it's going to be very difficult for them. And Samantha, you're still going through stomach issues and muscle issues and mm -hmm. all those issues yeah. and when are you did they book anything yet November I go to Guelph. November yeah okay so we uh, we need to pray they find some answers for Samantha mm -hmm. that uh, so they can do something actually even having the information on what's wrong makes a big difference I know when they discovered that I had that uh, atrial uh, fibrillation that helped a great deal didn't help with the condition. Well, yes, it did because then they changed my medications. <laughs> but I mean, uh, knowing that it's not all in your head, mm -hmm. because it, after a while, that's what you start to think. Well, it's yeah. just me. You know, yeah. it's there's nothing wrong. Um, so it's, um, yeah. Anyway, we need to uh, remember Sam as well. Any other prayer requests? Oh, golly. Yeah. Okay, is he still in chemo? Yeah. He just started back on it. Yeah. Stop his eyes. Right. I remember that. And it was starting back. And that's when they discovered that uh, after the chemo treatment that they did another check and found it there? Or? No, they are. They are in the middle still there. Oh. No, I mean in the kidney, that it was... Oh, okay. His kidneys. Does he know Jesus? Oh, praise God. Well, it doesn't matter what church you went to. It's where his heart is. Yeah. Church is a denomination. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Jimmy. Um, uh, Jimmy. Jim Brooks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, he's a man. Why do you call him Jimmy? He's like a little boy. Um, that he's uh, doing the radiation, and it's um, the. He's got 35 days to do, and he's got uh, one week gone, like five days are uh, done now. So he's got another 30 days to do. And um, the first day was really tough. It was the second day out. I had sent Carol a note, and um, she said, second day seems better. So I'm praying that it goes better. He has cancer on the vocal cords. And uh, for anyone that knows Jimmy, um, he talks. He talks a lot. So, uh, not sure how he would react to that. He said, I'll be fine. You know, it's, they had stopped in the, uh, the one day, and uh, they, they live up in uh, Mitchell, isn't it? Mitchell? Yeah, live in Mitchell. But they come down here to get their gas at KP, and... Um, and he's looking forward to the time he can go buy uh, cigarettes again. Like, really? Um, but it, <laughs> I wasn't sure if he was serious or not. You know, it's because you, when you get in a situation like that, that sometimes sarcasm and humor is what you use to, to cope. But we need to uh, use God. That's, that's where our coping strategies are. Um, is Dan okay? Okay. I was a little concerned when you were by yourself. <laughs> okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for always hearing our prayers. We thank you, Lord, that you're always here with us. 
And sometimes when it doesn't feel like it, it's because we backed away. Help us not to back away. Lord, help us to stand firm, to stand firm in our faith and in our trust in you. Lord, we lift up uh, numerous people to you today. We lift up Lois to you, who is ready to go home. We ask that you give her your peace, Lord. And Bevan as well, her husband. We ask that you be with him. It's, uh, it's very difficult for them because she's been in one home and he's been in another. And we ask that you give them both your peace, the peace that passes all understanding. And when she's ready to go home, we ask that you welcome her in with open arms. We lift Ron up to you, Lord, and ask that you embrace him, hold him close, Lord, heal him. That's what we want. We want him to be healed. But it's your will that we're always after. And sometimes it's uh, just used to be a ministry. And Lord, we lift up Samantha to you and ask that she get some answers from uh, these tests that are going to be coming about in November and that some resolution is found. And we lift up John to you, Lord. I know we've lifted all these people up to you before, Lord, but in faith we continue to lift them up to you. And it's not because you forget, but it's still it's faith that we lift them up to you, letting you know that we haven't forgotten either. We ask that you touch John, that you give him peace in his heart, and that he's surrounded by your love, Lord. And we ask, Lord, that this, uh, the chemo is effective in ridding him of the, uh, the cancer and restore his health. We lift up uh, Jimmy to you and ask that you touch him, embrace him, Lord, with your love. Let him know who you are, Lord. I don't know exactly where he stands with you, but you do. And it's, it's not up to me as long as he hears the message. It's up to him to make the choice. Be with the whole family as well, Lord. And we continue to give you thanks, Lord, for the healings that you have brought forward. We thank you for what you have done in Lori's life with uh, reducing the tumors in her, that uh, she will be completely rid of cancer again. We just ask, Lord, that you continue to be with each and every one of us. We give you all praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. God be with you. Till we meet again. that you remember um, Randy in prayer, uh, Katie's partner. And uh, Katie had two sons, David and John. And she had two grandchildren, I believe, isn't it? And they were David's. Yeah. They need your prayers as well. Um, it came as a shock to everybody. Total shock. Okay, Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it's by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. Do you want to go to the next one? Did I put the other picture in? There we go. Isn't that beautiful? Numbers 6, 24 to 26. And this is my prayer for you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Do you want to go back to that? Anybody got any idea where it is? You would think so, wouldn't you? Because it's the same colors. No, actually, that's uh, out the back or the front door of uh, my cousin's cottage. 
down in uh, PEI. And if you look across, see, see across, that's the bay, Malapak Bay. You look across there, you see um, Lenox Island. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I thought it was so nice. I had just gotten it uh, the other day. Um, God bless each and every one of you, and may God be with you until we meet again. Now that one is from Kettle Point. And that one is across from your place, right?